Let's talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog is cool as hell. The games are innovative, fun, a real journey through sights and sounds, and can even sometimes deliver on a decent story. Sonic and animation really knocks it out of the park too, delivering on pulse-pounding action that really exemplifies Sonic's too-cool-for-school persona. Except for like every time it doesn't and hasn't and it is big shit coming out of my butt. Yeah, I don't know what Sega wants with Sonic anymore. Although, I say anymore, but they've been doing weird shit with Sonic for ages. Remember that cartoon where he and his siblings have to rescue their mom, but also they like play guitars and shit? Remember that one where Sonic's a knight? Then there was the one that was half beat him up because he turned into a werewolf. Were. a werehog? Is that really the official term? Werehog? And then there's the Archie Sonic comics, which apparently have been in publication since the invention of the printing press, and ranges from a pretty cool read to absolute pants on head bat shittery. I never read it myself, some people were too busy getting laid in the mid 2000s. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> But people who have read it say it's a mixed bag. The art is sometimes good, sometimes god-awful, the writing is sometimes good, and sometimes it's a melodrama about magic echidnas that microwave their own children because of a bad dream they had. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, our man of the hour, I introduce you to Ken Penders. Ken Penders was a writer, penciler, inker, cover artist, editor, and god knows whatever else was needed for the Archie Sonic the Hedgehog comic book series. Why do you have a sword? So I can... Cut to the chase. Do you have brain damage? Mars one. Ken Penders, the man. Ken Penders is a crazy cuckoo man who's obsessed with the fictional race of Sonic the Hedgehog echidnas, like Knuckles. Mr. Penders wrote a good chunk of the original run of the Sonic Archie comic series and wrote the entirety of the Knuckles the Echidna comic series, as well as a couple other things. During his tenure at Archie Comics, Kenders wrote into being a whole universe of Echidna people based on Knuckles the Echidna, as well as a slew of other Comicverse exclusive original characters. Then, one fateful day, there was a fire at Archie, and a large number of documents were lost. One of these lost documents was the one that declared that Ken Pender's work was derivative of the Sonic the Hedgehog license, and therefore his creations were property of Sega. The ultimate consequence of this? Penders, on his way out of Archie, decided that, uh, those echidnas? They were his. All of them. Including Knuckles. Here's the rundown. Kenders wrote a ton of overly dramatic serious shit for the Sonic comics, the Sonic comics that Sega of Japan didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to. As the story goes, Sega of Japan caught wind that Penders and company were up to some wacky shit with the Sonic IP, and that's when this comic came across their desk. <laughs> I believe that's what the kids call a big oof moment. Some Sega of Japan suit looked at this and went, NANI? Cause you know, this was back when Sega kinda cared. This apparently resulted in Penders being removed from Archie. But the problems legally didn't begin until he saw the game Sonic Chronicles. Apparently the game had an evil faction in it that loosely resembled something Penders wrote for the Archie comics. Remember how I said that Penders decided those echidnas were his? Well, he viewed this as an infringement on his copyright and sued over it. Now, the story does get a little fuzzy from here, so I'm gonna tell it as it's told around the campfire at Sonic Fandom meetups. Archie presented a photocopy of Ken Pender's contract in court since the original was destroyed in the fire. The story goes that the presiding judge had literally no fucking idea what was going on. The judge heard the testimony and just straight up hit them with, What the f Fuck is a Sonic! And apparently he just couldn't get over not knowing what a Sonic the Hedgehog was. Reports also say that he was possibly confused about the concept of a comic book, and had literally zero knowledge of copyright and had never handled a copyright dispute before in his entire career. And in his infinite wisdom, he declared that a photocopy of the contract wasn't admissible for some fucking reason. Archie reports this back to Sega, who realizes they're in for a long ass lawsuit now, and Sega simply does not give enough of a shit. Sega gives Ken Penders a hundred dollars to fuck off, tell Archie never to use anything Penders ever wrote ever again, and Ken Penders walks away happy. However, Kenders didn't walk away just happy, he walked away thinking he had won a copyright dispute, thereby giving him ownership over the things he believed he owned. But of course that's not where it ended, because now Sonic the Hedgehog's a fucking smash hit in the theaters and Ken Penders is pissed 
that he's not getting a cut of that money. Here's just a brief list of Ken Pender's grievances. Ken Penders thinks he invented the idea of Sonic standing on the tornado, Tails' airplane. Actually, it's Sonic's airplane. You should read these. Some of them are pretty good. Ken Penders thinks he invented the idea of an echidna guy having an emerald-based super weapon. Ken Penders thinks he owns the copyright to Knuckles having a dad. Ken Penders thinks he owns the copyright to ideas that were originally game mechanics like super forms. Ken Penders thinks he owns the rights to fucking Knuckles the Echidna himself. We're talking about a man who apparently didn't realize Echidnas were a real animal when he started writing for Sonic. He thought they were a fictional fantasy race. So, now, obviously, he's talking about trying to sue Paramount, and he thinks he's gonna win because he's deluded himself into thinking he actually beat Sega legally and has precedent. You know, I'm not usually one to root for a major corporation in a legal dispute, but I think I could set my biases aside for a special occasion. What in the goddamn is going on in this image? Ken Pender's art is genuinely atrocious. It's hard to look at. It's also really inconsistent. I mean, just look at this image. The art in this image alone is inconsistent. It looks like two different, equally incompetent people drew this. But was Ken Penders always like this? I did some digging and found the one comic I could find that Ken Penders penciled and inked exclusively. And this art is passable at worst and decent at best. It's definitely serviceable for Sonic the Hedgehog. You can tell, though. You can sometimes tell by the eyes that this is a Ken Penders original. Nowadays, he does stuff like this. This doesn't look like anything we've seen Ken Penders draw. Why might that be? It's because he didn't draw it, it's traced. Ken Penders has been accused of tracing for a long time, but this shit is just blatant. This commission he did for a fan? Traced. And when called out on it, his excuse was, and I shit you not, well, what did you want me to do? Disappoint a child by telling him I can't draw Shadow the Hedgehog? What do you mean you can't draw Shadow the Hedgehog? If I fucking pay Ken Penders to draw me Shadow the Hedgehog, I know what I'm paying for, and if I don't get a Shadow the Hedgehog that looks like fucking this, I'm gonna feel like I got scammed. Yes, Ken Penders, we know you can't draw. That doesn't excuse you for charging commission money for traced art. Can you imagine if another big name artist, possibly even an industry professional, did something like this? Butch Hartman of Fairly Odd Parents fame also does this shit. This makes me so angry. If I pay an artist hundreds, that's hundred with an S on the end of it, meaning more than $199 of dollars. Now, let me try it again. If I pay big money to get an artist with a distinct art style to draw me something, I expect it to look like something they draw. I want my Ken Penders art to look like this, and I want my Butch Hartman art to look like that. I don't know, when else am I gonna get to talk about Butch Hartman? Plus, talking about Ken Penders at all just really flusters me. I mean, look at this art. It's a work in progress of another commission he did where it looks like he's actually putting in a lot of work. The tweet even apologizes that it's taking longer than expected. So why the fuck did he trace the shadow art? 13-year-old girls can draw Shadow the Hedgehog, and they never tried to sue Seg over enchiladas. Victor, every time. Every time. It's just laziness. An artist that can, but doesn't. I suspect that's the source of his inconsistent art style. He could draw like this all the time, but that would take effort. More effort than he's willing to put in. Which is shocking, considering he cares about this fictional race of echidnas to the point of obsession. I've seen some people suggest that Ken Pender's art talent has simply deteriorated over time, which I suppose is possible. But I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and say he's just gotten lazier and more complacent as time has gone on. Is that really giving him the benefit of the doubt? What'd you mean? Wouldn't it be better if he got worse at art? You're asking if it's better to have your talents deteriorate with time than you becoming a lazy hack with age? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, I suppose the answer to that would be unique to each person. Would I rather have the things I'm good at be things I'm bad at as the years tick by, or would I rather people think I've become lazy but I'm still talented? Honestly, I think I'd choose the latter. And maybe, so is Ken Penders. Oh, the Sonic Hack. I bet you're familiar with the rap artist, Hunted P. You're not? Oh. Well, I bet you're familiar with motherfucking Pumpkin Hill. This place sure feels haunted. There's no time to lose. I have to hurry and find the Master Emerald. Rap artist Hunted P wrote, recorded, and produced all of the Knuckles music for Sonic Adventure 2 in a single day. 
then years later claimed that they never paid him for that, which turned out to be false. Also, he apparently told people on social media he was making music for a new Sonic game, which turned out to be fake. He just wanted people to pay attention to him. Oh, the Sonic game over. Good night.